All right, so at this point, we've already talked about James Brown and his first two marriages, but now we need to talk about James and Adrian, his very chaotic third wife. In February 1982, while filming an upcoming episode of the TV show Solid Gold, he spotted the show's hairstylist, a woman named Adrian Rodriguez. He said, quote, look at the spank on that woman. He asked his friend, Reverend Al Sharpton, to ask her out for him and to get her number. Now, Adrian was a mixture of Italian, Black, Jewish, and Latinx. Some said she, quote, looked like a modern day Cleopatra. Well, James said, quote, our souls met a long time ago. We met visually on solid gold, but we was already together because we're third world people. Nothing in this country is like us. We got that other look. But the rest of the world saw her as a white woman, or at least a non-Black woman, and they would call her an N-word lover. They started to see each other and on September 21st, 1984, they went to the courthouse and got married. She wore a beige chiffon dress with a matching hat and James's mom and cousin were witnesses to the union. James was 51 and Adrienne was 34. Now, Adrienne was a different type of wife compared to his first two. She was way more volatile in turn. Biographer R.J. Smith said, quote, when you pushed her, she knew where to push back. And they also enjoyed partaking in the dust of an angel which also meant a lot of tussling too. So one time she swore that James was cheating on her. So she ran up on this woman and stabbed her in the butt with scissors. And whenever James did something she didn't approve of, she would be so quick to call the cops or anyone that would listen to alert them of any of James's indiscretions. Like this one time, she told journalists that James Brown does drugs, which was something he didn't necessarily want members of his team partaking in. This was a very known thing. James Brown was really anti-drug, though he kind of had an addiction, allegedly. Well, James said the reason she did that was because he told her that he didn't want her to come with him on tour to Brazil. And so she was upset. And so by retaliating, she went to the press to say that her husband was a drug addict. But you have to think about it. Was she weaponizing her whiteness towards her husband or was she simply a wife calling for help while being abused? I do want you to know that it can actually be both. So almost as much as she would call the cops on James, she'd get arrested her damn self. Now this one time after calling 911, she was arrested later for going to the airport with a quote PCP soaked cigarette and four nasal sprays of the stuff. A month later, she'd be arrested for possession of seven ounces of PCP and arson for burning James's clothes in a hotel room. When James served time for this cross-state police chase between Georgia and South Carolina, Adrian was going around saying that, quote, her husband's arrest was a racially motivated frame-up. But literally months before, she was selling pictures of her bruises to the National Enquirer for $15,000. Is it sex machine or say it loud? Well, they would obviously get back together again as they always had and Adrian would again call the cops on James and James would deny the allegations and then he'd be released and threaten to divorce her and then they get back together, rinse and repeat. But at their annual Christmas party in 1995, guests recalled them looking very happy. This carried over into New Year's Eve where they danced together on stage at a concert of his in Greenwood, South Carolina. Now, the following day in January 1996, Adrian went to Los Angeles for liposuction. She was prescribed Vicodin, Valium, Morphine, and Demerol to aid her recovery. But two days later, she would be found unconscious. She didn't even make it to the hospital before being declared dead. Sadly, she was 45 years old. The coroner's report said she had a heart condition plus PCP in her system. So in addition to taking all of those prescriptions with these conditions, this all likely contributed to her death. Now he would put on a happy face, but everybody around him knew that James was down very, very badly. After smoking some dust of the angel, he'd go outside in his drawers, shoot a 22 handgun and a 30 rifle in the sky towards heaven. This incident would lead his daughter to calling the cops on him and getting him briefly committed. Now, love is never that far away from James, so let's take a quick pause here and we will get into his final marriage. So if you're concerned that your favorite show may not be back on TV by this fall because of the writer's strike, you should follow I'll Tell You What on the Tube of You. Make it something you watch every single week. 